Well, good afternoon, everyone. I certainly hope that everyone here is having as good of a day as I am. As you know, the theme of the inauguration is progress with integrity. And several of us spoke about progress with integrity. And this afternoon's symposium is an opportunity for us to focus a little bit, to target a little bit on three specific areas, the areas of jobs, culture, and service. And it's at the nexus of jobs, culture, and service that SMCC really lives. That's what we're all about here. So as I said, I don't want to talk a lot. I just want to introduce our distinguished panelists. But there, is, there are two sentences out of my talking points I do want to share. Because I got to these and I said, why didn't I think of that myself? That's a really good way to put it. Quote, our mission is not to train people with specific skills to do specific jobs, although we do a lot of that. Our mission is to empower students to respond to a changing world. To me, that says quite a bit. And the folks who know more about this than I do, I want to thank John Doerr, Anna Eleanor Roosevelt, Beth Newlands Campbell, and Brenda Garrett for taking the time to be with us today and for offering their expertise and support to the college. I'd also like to thank our moderator, Greg Lagerquist, and offer a few words of introduction before turning the microphone over to him. Greg is a recognizable face in Maine. He's reported the news for WGME since 1996 and now anchors the 6 and 11 o'clock news. He's the winner of numerous state and national awards, including the first ever Walter Cronkite Awards for Excellence in Political Coverage. I have to stop here and say, what a great day for trust because Walter Cronkite, who year after year was voted the most trusted man in the world, and Greg won the Walter Cronkite Award, and this morning we had the most trusted man in the Senate. This is a big day for trust. In addition to reporting the news, Greg is active in many charity organizations, including the Hear Me Now, a group that helps deaf and hard of hearing children in Maine get a great start in life. Please join me in welcoming Greg, Brenda, Beth, Ann, and John. Question. Um, I think the community college does a tremendous job when I think about a word accessibility. And when I think about accessibility, I think about accessibility in terms of geography. And to a certain extent, if you look at the whole community college system, it's really about bringing education to where the people are. I think about accessibility when um, I think of the, the Nike when it says there's an athlete in everyone. And to me, I think what the community college system does, it's about the student in everyone. And there's many students that come to school here that it may be their first school or their first college experience. They may be re-entering, sort of writing another chapter of their lives. It may be the first one in their family. And it's about having that college experience. Um, I think another part of accessibility, and you can't talk about accessibility without talking about affordability. And I think the community college system has done an incredible job with that. And I look back at seven of the last 13 years the tuition has been held flat. Now I know I have been doing business in the state of Maine for all of those years, and I can tell you that the cost of doing business has not been flat. So to me, that doesn't happen without tremendous leadership, a tremendous vision, and really a stake in the ground and saying, we're gonna keep this college affordable and Thank accessible. Thank you very much. It's such a pleasure to be here with all of you. You know, I'm an old Bates graduate, and I spend a lot of time being very bullish about the notion of liberal arts education as an important part of what makes us good critical thinkers. But I have to say, when I think about this institution and about the community college system in general, there are three things that, to me, characterize the excellence that we in the state are so very fortunate to have available to our immediately post-secondary students as well as individuals lifelong who rely on the community college system. The first is a tremendous spirit of collaborativeness. One of the things that I think is terrifically important is the notion that education is not a one-stop or one-facet kind of a thing. It's a continuum very often. And the fact that individuals that choose to attend here can start and finish here, can start here and go elsewhere, can start here and come back 
it's a wonderful place that works well and plays well with others. And I think in a state like Maine, that's a hugely important uh, part of what makes this place so terrific. The second thing that I'm really excited about with this institution is the fact that it has a great pervasive impact on our community. I was thinking today as I went through my daily activities, the number of individuals that touched my life and touched the life of those I care about that have been personally impacted by the community college system. Whether the person that I talked to at Moody's or the person who was a caregiver for my mom or an individual who helped make my lunch, individuals that make sure that my uh, office is running properly and the electricity is actually uh, in good shape. I am very uh, gratified to know that in my community there is a place where individuals go to be able to do the work of their lives. They learn how to be who they're going to be and who they continue to involve being. And that to me is really an exciting part of what the community college uh, system, in particular university, uh, this, this particular Southern Maine Community College stands for. And finally, as an individual who started a business 25 years ago and lives and works as an entrepreneur, I am really excited by the tools, the skills, and the uh, enthusiasm that's provided for young ones and individuals who are re-entering toward the notion of starting their own businesses. The education and the support that are received by many through, across a vast number of fields here at this institution say to me that these are folks who are going to be able to live where they want, make a living wage, contribute back to their community, and be sovereigns in their own lives. And for me, entrepreneurialism is a tremendous gift and one that I hope I can in a small way help to uh, pass along to others. Thank you, Brent. We mentioned earlier that, um, or. Dr. Cantor, I think you mentioned that this isn't just a place where you acquire skills for a particular job, but it is a place where you learn to think. And that is not only so important, but so opportune for the type of institution that SMCC is. And I think that, that this college has a wonderful opportunity to really provide a renaissance of citizenship. We need greater understanding of what it means to be a citizen. And the, the students who come here to this college are at a perfect place where in every, in every setting on this campus, they can be uh, helped to learn, helped to explore, helped to experience what it means to be a citizen. Now we use that word very glibly. We think we know what it means, but if we don't nurture its practice, uh, it becomes just rhetoric. Thinkers. And frankly, I think that the average parent, the average student, when they come out of it and with their degree, they're going to gauge their success by, do I have a job? Is it the job I want? So I'd like you maybe all to sort of speak to that. And, and, uh, and John, maybe I will start with you. It, it can't just be about numbers. But numbers are important. Numbers do matter <laughs> uh, because they measure result. And I think we need, in the end, to hold ourselves as a culture much more accountable to getting results uh, as opposed to broad aims. Uh, I think this notion of skills for an informed citizenry versus uh, skills for uh, high performance in the workplace is, quite frankly, a false dichotomy. Uh, in my study of the labor market, and as long as I've been at it, uh, when I sit down and carefully listen to what employers are saying and when they articulate the skill sets that they're looking for uh, from the people that they want to hire, they've got to think critically, they've got to behave uh, as problem solvers, uh, they've got to be analytical. Uh, those are, by the way, not, not just some formulation, but those come out at the top of the list. We survey national employers and main employers as to the skill sets that employers are looking for. So I don't know about you, but I think if we had those skills at work in our democracy and in our community, uh, I think we'd do uh, quite well in terms of having both an informed citizenry and a, and a high performance workforce. So I think we need to kind of... I have a pretty large concern, and it's a concern that I think impacts the community college system as well as the university system here in Maine, and that is... I think it's a tremendous challenge for an institution that's working very hard to do a lot on a flat-funded 
in a flat tuition-based situation, when the students that present themselves to the institution are not adequately prepared. And as far as I understand, there is an enormous amount of preparation that college-bound students have to, in, have to take on once they come to college. Imagine how much more could be done for students if they arrived here prepared to do college-level work. And it's not something that's completely true of the community college system. It's also true of the university system. The fact is students don't arrive here able to write, to read, and to do math at a level that enables them to take on their coursework, and they're not ready to go. And as a result, that's just a built-in capacity suck, as far as I can tell, that I think we as a state need to confront. Thank you. Uh, I think there's another driver of the advantage. I don't think there's enough room, and we need to create more room, absolutely. We've got 50,000 main people out there unemployed, uh, many of them due to no fault of their own. These are people who are stranded in the economy. And when you look at the data in terms of where the demand is versus the skill sets of people that are unemployed, there's a huge mismatch. And we can extend unemployment insurance to 90 weeks to 150 weeks. We are not going to change the fate of those people whose skills don't match up with demand. And until we commit in a very serious way as a state uh, to not leaving those individuals stranded, and investing in their skill sets to align them with where the economy is going, uh, we're going to be suffering long-term consequences of lost productivity and some human misery uh, that I think is, is wholly unfair. Uh, and I think we have an obligation as a society and as a culture to sort of level the playing field for a lot more people who are being left stranded due to no fault of their own. Um, because I think it's not just, uh, it's not an individual's problem, it is a community problem. It's a, it's a collective uh, unwillingness to, to connect the dots between resources made available as a, as a collective and the results that we think we all want to achieve. What is it that the private sector hopes to get out of that invest investment, if I can ask it that way, Ben? My first comment about it is, you know, we should all feel proud for the you know, $12 million that we raised under the foundation, and I think it's only a start. I think that we have to get more. I think the community college system, you can almost put underneath it the bumper sticker that's, that says, you know, doing more with less. And if they need to... <laughs> we need to figure out how to allow them to do more with more. And I think we all own that. An admirable investment and, and a generous set of contributions. But I have a problem with, with running gigantic bake sales to find the major economic drivers of our future. I think we need to figure out how do we, in effect, invest in serious ways uh, to create a future. And this is the only way that, that I think we're going to move forward. There are some powerful forces. On the one hand, the, market, the forces of the marketplace is saying, we need curriculum to transform quickly. We need programs of study to keep up with the fast pace of technological change and, and the changing nature of the workplace. We've got the force of consumers, in effect, saying we need in the door because this is the way we transform ourselves and make ourselves more productive. So we've got market forces on the consumer side, on the demand side from employers, and then we leave it to a political establishment to finance. Uh, and I think it's maybe not the right kind of business model yet that we uh, <laughs> to move forward. Well, let's speak to that. But is there a lack of political will? Or is it that it's there, but there aren't enough dollars? Oh, you for can't... heaven's sake, let's just call it out. Go ahead. We are living in a famine economy. And this famine economy exists because we have a complete disconnect between what it costs to run a civil society and what we're willing to raise in revenue to support it. Just saying. Now, that having been said, um, I think this institution under, under John's leadership has been incredibly successful in navigating these very, very difficult waters. But I think, for, I for one think it's a tragedy when we have 
institutions that are providing critical services for folks that need them, whether they're students or individuals that need health care or even the maintenance of our state parks, for God's sake, that we can't seem to figure out that you've got to have enough money to make sure the bridges don't fall down and that the roads work and that we're able to educate our students adequately. To me, I'm with John. I mean, I'm more than happy from the public sector to, I mean, from the private sector to do everything I can to provide serious support, but to expect that that's a sustainable or even sustaining mechanism when what we do here is so important and so critical to the future of the state and to our people, it just seems to me to be an unfortunate turn of events, and I'm hopeful that this will not be the way it goes forever. Goal. But we have to understand that these things are not evil, that they in fact produce what we want, that reinforces market need, that then it's a virtuous circle. And right now we don't have, um, we don't have the, the political will, um, um, whether in Augusta or Washington or anywhere else, to make that connection and to speak boldly and constructively about it. It's not only virtuous, it's damn sound economically. <laughs> For every dollar that we put in to this kind of investment, we get it back downstream in terms of more than uh, what, what we invest. So why is it that when we are faced with overwhelming evidence that for every dollar that we invest, we're going to get more back, uh, that we continue to underinvest, that we continue to sidestep the major issue what's going to drive our economic future by just making bad, ill-informed, and quite frankly, very dumb choices for the future? I, I think, Greg, it's very hard to be an engaged citizen in a democracy if you don't have a job uh, and the means to support yourself. And I think we've got too many people who are living on the edge, who can't enjoy the fruits of a democracy or what our culture has to offer because they don't have access to employment opportunities. So we've got to be able to put these things together. Uh, it's not either or. I think it's absolutely about a job and being able to, uh, in effect, support people in terms of living more prosperous and satisfying. From this day, uh, looking at those students in that culinary arts program today, uh, it is delightful to see students who look you in the eye, who speak and act with poise, who are confident in what they're doing and where they're going. Uh, and I suspect in the culinary arts program at Southern Maine Community College, you not only learn uh, important skills about putting out great desserts, uh, <laughs> but it says... It, we we it weren't says counting how many you took, Jeff. They're learning a whole lot of skills about life along the way, so I think there is a double helix here. Uh, and Beth? I think I would just close with saying, and I, I came up with that, I'm not sure where I came up with that, the, the more with less, but whenever you run a business, sometimes you think about how do I do more with less? And the one thing I think I, I'd close with saying is I think what the community college system has done really well is the first thing you would think you would sacrifice is quality. And I think this institution has figured out how to keep the quality incredibly high. So the students coming out of this institution, they're talented, they can do these jobs, and they care. So good for you. And the, the other thing I would say is to me is leadership really matters. And I think we have uh, you know, I'm incredibly confident about uh, where we're going and excited to work with President Cantor. So, thank you. Well, thank you very much. If we give a round of applause for our four panelists here today.